Um, I've been a vegan for 20 years. I'll be 43 in September. Yay, you can applaud that. 20 years is a long time. Thank you. And um, I never set out to become a vegetarian, let alone a vegan. In fact, when I was growing up, I never ate my vegetables unless I was forced to do that. I'm sure a lot of you can relate to that. And um, I used to dip the bacon back in the grease can on the stove because that's how much I liked meat and greasy foods together. And when I um, was in seventh grade at Sidwell Friends School in Washington, D.C., some of you may be familiar with that school because it's where the Obama girls are now attending in D.C. And I went there from third through twelfth grade. And we had um, teachers for our seventh grade camping trip that wanted it to be all vegetarian. So I wrote a petition trying to overrule this. And um, a few of my friends signed it, but most did not, and my teachers overruled me. And so we ended up having granola and peanut butter and honey sandwiches on whole wheat for the camping trip. And so I thought this was um, vegetarianism, vegetarianism was just something that crazy white people did. I mean, I was in seventh grade at the time, didn't know anybody else who was a vegetarian except for these two crazy teachers. So fast forward seven years, and I'm a sophomore at Amherst College in Massachusetts, and our Black Student Union brought Dick Gregory to campus to talk about the state of black America. Yay for Dick Gregory, that's right. And um, instead of talking about the, plate, the state of black America, he talked about the plate of black America. So he talked about how unhealthfully most black folks eat. And this was in 1986. And my freshman year, I had gained 25 pounds because I was away from home. I wasn't forced to eat vegetables. I never ate vegetables or fruit. And I ate lots of great, unhealthy, junky food. So um, I had already gained 25 pounds, and I think that I would be well on my way to becoming overweight and having chronic health conditions if I had not attended that lecture. So I tuned Dick Gregory out immediately because he was talking about vegetarianism and it reminded me of my crazy teachers at Sidwell. And I thought, okay, well, crazy black people are vegetarian too, obviously. So, but what really got me about what he said about his lecture was when he traced the path of a hamburger from a cow on a factory farm to a slaughterhouse to a fast food place to a heart attack. And I had never heard anything like that before in my life. And it just really stunned me because I ate hamburgers almost every day, hot dogs, all of that stuff. And so I immediately gave up hamburgers and hot dogs for a week and then decided nobody gives up meat. But I couldn't, give up, I couldn't get what he said out of my mind. So that summer I went home and I read all of the books I could read, including Dick Gregory's book that he had written in the 70s about eating vegetarian. And decided by the end of the summer, along with my mother and my middle sister, to become vegetarian. So that's kind of how it happened for me. And um, that was more than 20 years ago. It took me two years to get off cheese. Can anybody relate to that? Yeah. Cheese was really my kryptonite, which I, which I talk about a little in the book. But I finally was able to get off of cheese and became a vegan two years after that and have been promoting veganism for all of this time and then decided to go to grad school in 2001 and, and get a degree in public health nutrition because I had been promoting it for over a decade and decided that this is what I wanted to dedicate my life to. So that one lecture by Dick Gregory really changed the direction of my life. And so I could be a vegan and know that I'm, I'm gonna live a disease-free, healthy life, um, be healthy, hippie, and happy. I still have a little hip, even though I'm thin. And, you know, be fine and go on and live my life. But for me, I have to spread this message far and wide because Dick Gregory decided to spread the message far and wide. And he is the reason that I'm a vegetarian and then vegan. And so I feel that I, I really have to spread this message. And in the book, I target black women in particular um, because while we are fabulous, we are actually the unhealthiest group in the country. 80% of us are overweight, 50% of us are obese, and we have all of the chronic conditions dealing with heart disease, stroke, cancer, and diabetes that come with that. And we're passing that on to our kids to the point 
that our kids, this may be the first generation of children that does not live as long as their parents because of chronic disease from meat and dairy foods. So that's why I target black folks, black women in particular, um, but my message is for everyone. I talk to everyone because everyone can benefit from eating more plant-based foods. Um, and one of the one of the proudest moments in my life was when my mother became a vegetarian. She's from the South, from South Carolina, and um, became a vegetarian with me and a vegan with me two years later when she was in her 50s. She's now 73, still a vegan. I talk about her in the introduction. She still has a 37, 26, 37 inch figure. She has no illnesses whatsoever. and. She has 14 siblings, and of those who have survived, she's the only one who doesn't have any chronic diseases at all. So it's not rocket science, it's meat and dairy, saturated fat and cholesterol. So I think my time is almost up, so I, I just wanted to kind of give a testimony about my story, why I'm up here today, why I'm doing what I'm doing. And um, I just want to say, if you're considering it, eat more vegan foods. And wherever you are on your path, just continue to eat more vegan foods. For me, it took two years. It's a struggle. It's a process. But you do yourself, the animals, and the planet a world of good the more, the more vegan foods you eat. Thank you very much.